<laughs> Here we are again. <laughs> MLB The Show 18, we meet again. I really was hoping it was going to be a lot longer before I had to, to jump back on this game because, spoiler alert chat, MLB 18 wasn't it. So if you've been following the channel the past couple days, we've been going back onto the last two or last three uh, Diamond Dynasties. So on Tuesday, we did MLB The Show 16. Uh, yesterday, we did MLB The Show 17. And that means naturally today, we're going to be doing MLB The Show 18. And MLB The Show 18 Diamond Dynasties mode was weird, okay? So like, it wasn't like god awful. It wasn't great. There were just some things that missed the mark completely. I talked about it in the last video. MLB 17 was a, you know, it was a really, really big turning point in Diamond Dynasty. It's really when they found their footing with content. Gameplay had some issues, but at the end of the day, like, compared to this game, gameplay was, was miles better. So, Diamond Dynasty in the show 18 tried to take everything that they did in 17 in terms of content and elevate it. But at the end of the day, it just didn't work. It, it sounded nice on paper, but in, you know, in execution, it just didn't work. So let's get into Diamond Dynasty. So the home screen of Diamond Dynasty, they have these panels here that you could, you know, look at different things. Kind of like how 19 has the home screen. This is where they kind of introduced that topic where it would like show you new content. So they're obviously advertising the show 19 before that came out and stuff. And then you have, you know, what's going on with the rank season. You have what's going on with, uh, you know, the event and stuff like that and then the roster update and daily matchup were over here on the front uh, front screen so that's whatever but let's go ahead and get into the other stuff uh, online so you move over one tab and then you of course have the three different ways you can play online and then you have play with friends casual and of course the standings so you had battle royale once again if you've been watching the last two videos we'll do battle royale at the end I want to go over everything else and then we'll draft a team and jump into a game but let's go ahead and take a look at rank seasons so rank seasons um, the rewards were, it's so weird because this game just comes down to like a lot of just missed opportunities and a lot of things that just weren't executed well because if you look at the rewards for ranked seasons, they were actually pretty good on paper. You get a 97 to 98 overall finest player for making World Series. You also get a 92 to 96 finest player. You also get a 90 to 94 overall live series. You also get some autographs and baseball or autographs and stuff and souvenirs, which we will go into later. Don't you worry. But you also get 50,000 stubs and like the rewards they actually seem worth it on paper and then you can look over here at the rest of the rewards and see all the little things you get and you know they did a good job of kind of explaining it at the end of the day you guys will see once we jump into the actual collect part of it and showing you the missions and the cards and stuff you'll see why these rewards even though they look good on paper just weren't really very good overall in terms of online gameplay so Rank seasons didn't really change that much though in terms of the rating. Still worked the same. Still got to 900 for World Series. 100 to 800 was the different divisions and stuff like that. So that's still the same. Um, events. I actually think events were probably the most fun way to play MLB The Show 18. <laughs> Because there were some some fun events and there was a certain aspect of content, which I'm sure you guys know once we get to it, uh, that really kind of ruined content in MLB The Show 18. But in events, you didn't always have to worry about that. You could kind of just play with a bunch of different cards. And some of the rewards were pretty cool. Some of them didn't really weren't all that good. But at the end of the day, it was still fun to play them. So I actually liked events a lot. Um, but once again, they really didn't do anything different than they did in MLB The Show 17. It was the same game mode, the same reward structure. It was all pretty much the same when it came to that and then of course play with friends casual And then we can take a look at the standings really quick lifetime standings I'm pretty sure were glitched on this game because uh, I can pretty much guarantee you guys that a You know somebody who has a 187 batting average isn't the number two player in the world So I don't exactly know what was wrong with the leaderboards But these were not correct at all and then one thing that's interesting is up here They had a thing for tournaments like if you hit l1 r1 you can see who the best br 
BR players were, or you should be able to see who the best BR players were, CPU, and then this one, they had a tournaments tab, this was just never followed up on, so even the leaderboards on this game were glitched. Okay, so then over here you had single player. Once again, we had Conquest, Conquest didn't take any steps differently, or actually no, that's, that's false, I apologize. Conquest did do something different, which we'll talk about here, um, but as far as if you're just playing Conquest, it's the same thing. It's the same United States board where you have to get all 30 teams, all 30 territories, and control every space on the map. It still worked the same. There was a different form of Conquest, though, called Conquest Extreme. So I'm jumping the gun a little bit and heading over here. I'll talk about this whole screen that we're on. But this is a program, and this is a program dedicated to Conquest. So this is Conquest Part 1, and you can see some of the cards that you get. You get an 80 overall Joaquin Benoit. You get a pack. You get an 81 overall Aegon. You get an 81 Ron Guidry. You get an 83 overall Ian Desmond. You get an 84 Marco Estrada. And then at the end, you get 84 Jim Edmonds along with some packs. And the last three cards you get, 85 overall Cole Hamels, 85 overall Edgar Martinez. And at the very end of the program, you get a 87 overall breakout Luis Gonzalez. Not a terrible looking card. The power wasn't all there. But, you know, the, the card itself doesn't look all that bad. Really good contact, decent fielding, decent speed. So you get some decent rewards out of that. So then if you go over one more tab, you go over to Conquest Extreme, and Conquest Extreme was basically just a more complicated way to play Conquest. You guys know how in MLB The Show 19, they've been adding the, um, you know, complete this by turn one or take this over by turn three sort of things. This is where that concept kind of originated. So like right here, conquer, conquer the Rockies on or before turn two, the Dodgers turn two, and you can go all the way down. You had to do things before turn uh, four and complete the entire map before turn 15, turn 18 and stuff, and that just kind of required you to play more Steel Fans games and to uh, not simulate as much, and you know, it was just another way to play Conquest, and it was a lot harder, it was a lot more difficult, and a lot of people really struggled with it and hated with it, or hated it, and some of the rewards were pretty good, actually. Um, over here, you had an 86 overall Orlando Cepeda, you had an 85 Oral Hershiser, and then the last three rewards were 86 Brian Dozier, who had a good amount of power, you had an 80, uh, 93 overall Yadier Molina, who had really good field. And then the final reward, a 92 overall Matt Kemp, who overall was a really good card. So the rewards for Conquest Extreme were actually pretty good, once again, on paper. And then they had this other one for Conquest Destiny, which I didn't actually even do. So... Yeah, Conquest Destiny was just kind of weird. Um, some of the rewards are okay, like Robin Yao, eh, whatever. 89, Sergio Romo, decent looking card right there. 87, Salvador Perez. This came out in like like August or something or sometime late in the year so you can probably tell what people's reactions were when they saw a card like this uh, 89 overall Whitey Ford uh, 93 overall Al Kaline and then a 94 overall Eddie Murray a pretty decent first baseman right there so that's not too bad so you know the rewards for Conquest once again on paper just were not bad um, and they did introduce a couple new ways to play Conquest which have kind of transferred over to MLB The Show 19 but MLB The Show 19 obviously is doing it way better so going back to the single player tab you had play versus cpu and then you had extra innings play versus cpu was used way more this year than it was uh or than it is in mlb the show 19 because of the way you actually grinded so we'll talk about that coming up here and then of course we have the squad screen now this is what i was talking about in mlb the show 17 when the squad screen just looked really nice this one just doesn't like, they went for a much more simplified approach. So, in your outfield, you can see those three guys. You see your ace starting pitcher, and then you see your uh, five guys in the infield. And it's like, you know, it's... It's like try, it's it. This to me seems like somebody who doesn't understand baseball trying to put all the players in one tab that doesn't really understand how a baseball field actually looks. They just maybe will understand the number system, like Yachty would be two, Muncie three, DJ four, so on and so forth. Like that's what it seems like. It just it's not a very I don't know. It's just boring. It's bland. It doesn't have any flair. There's just, it's boring to look at. And that's, you know, I don't know. It always kind of bothered me from day one. But anyway, the squad screen, pretty much the same. Uh, you have all these guys here, all your diamonds and stuff. Diamond 99 overall, Bob Feller, Clayton Kershaw. You had Jake Arietta over in the pen. I had an 86 overall, Jake McGee. Once again, I did quick sell and sell a lot of my cards so I could do a big pack opening uh, at the end of the year. So that's why 
play a lot of these cards or a lot of my team may not be as good as you might remember there's still a lot of good cards on here like uh mike piazza over here they think this is a yogi Berra, yeah first base you had albert pujols 98 overall jeff bagwell who was really good this albert pujols oh my god if this guy looks anything like what his nlb 19 card is gonna look like i'm gonna be excited uh frank thomas he looks pretty much the same as his uh as the uh signature series in in 19 anyway but yeah this was squad screen, pretty much the same. Nothing to change there. I don't know why I have a team of all silvers. I must have done a team build or something. I don't know. But yeah, customized team pretty much works the same. Created player, they changed up a little bit this year. It's more like it is in MLB The Show 19. And MLB 16 and 17, you just had to feed players, and it was really easy to get your guy to an all 99. This time, they actually introduced like the, the created player build, which was good. I, I, that was a good addition there. Um, all right. Now we're getting into the real fun stuff, the collect tab. So you guys know in 17 they started to add like programs and you know they had the two programs for rookie cards two programs for breakouts and all stars and uh hardwares and legend and they had the future stars program like the programs and the missions were really good in the show 17 so mlb the show 18 went into the mindset okay how can we make them even better or how can we make the content even better and what they did is they basically funneled every single mission or every way to grind through these programs. And as soon as you click on programs, you're automatically put on this tab with these different players who were called the Immortals. Oh man, Immortals. Now you guys can see these guys obviously stand out compared to every other card art. These are, you know, they're highlighted. They've got this kind of halo effect going on behind them. They've got this, this uh, glow on the lights behind it. It's just, you know, they look kind of out of this world or, or kind of, you know, elevated if you could say. I don't know. They just, they stand out. And the reason is these cards... This, like, row of cards right here, these were the best cards in the game. None of them were available on the market. The only way you could acquire these cards is by playing the game. Now, that doesn't mean you couldn't pay to get these cards, which I will explain here. It's just, you couldn't buy these cards. You literally had to play the game, and the grinds that these Immortals required were extreme. You might think it's bad trying to get to 300 stars, or you might think it's bad trying to do um, a storyline uh, set of moments in MLB The Show 19. That is literally a cakewalk compared to anything you had to do in MLB The Show 18. So I pretty much completed a lot of the position players because I play the game every day and I'm a content creator, so I go after these. But if we take a look at some of the pitching missions, let's take a look at like Nolan Ryan. Um, Nolan Ryan, okay. Complete game. I had to throw a complete game shutout, uh, and I had to win the game, throw eight innings pitch, 13 strikeouts. Not hard. Play the CPU on rookie. You can, you know, do that really easily. Then you have the Ryan Express. You got to win 10 games. You got to throw 75 innings, and you got to strike out 70 batters. Once again, not the hardest thing to do because you can play the CPU on rookie. It will be annoying trying to get Nolan Ryan on the mound because, you know, you can't choose your starting pitcher, which was a problem that this game had. Um, and then there were some other missions, uh, which I had already done over here that I can't show you because it's kind of blocked out. Just understand that, like, some of these 333 starter strikeouts. It doesn't even have to be all with Nolan Ryan. Just but like... 383 strikeouts just for one mission that doesn't even unlock you the immortal like think you gotta start thinking about how much or, or how many statistical requirements were required to actually get these cards ken griffey jr over here the best card in mlb the show 19 right um Right here. No, that's the 88. Never mind. Sorry. The 99. This is the best card in the game. There's no debating at this point. Power was king. Ken Griffey Jr. had the best card in the game. Absolutely. 95 fielding, 92 arm strength. Even though fielding really didn't matter, arm strength didn't matter. The speed was nice, 84 speed. But the power, the hitting, he had the reverse splits against lefties. He was just a beast, right? Some of the missions you had to do to get Ken Griffey Jr. was just... Oh, it just hurts even thinking about it. Um... Where's the sweetest swing mission? This one. You had to do a bunch of stats with Ken Griffey Jr. And you had to get like 400 plate appearances with just Ken Griffey Jr. cards. Not like center fielders. 400 plate appearances with one card. Now granted, you could use the 88. You could use the 72. You could use the gold one. Whatever. But you had to get 400 plate appearances with just Ken Griffey Jr. cards. You get three to five a game depending on where you bat him in the order like oh man 
It was just a crazy grind, and I can't believe that I actually did it. I really need a life. Now, just take the grind out of it, okay? Let's say these cards weren't that difficult to acquire, or not even difficult, just weren't that tedious of a grind to actually stand in their way. Let's just say you could get these cards pretty easily, right? There are so many different cards, now that you see that these are the best in the game, pretty much every other card just becomes irrelevant. And these guys were in the game since, like, day one. Now, you couldn't unlock them on day one. You could get them. They, they released them kind of in June because they released the career arcs, which we'll talk about in a second. But these guys, once you kind of know who the best cards in the game are, it's kind of like... What's the point of me doing anything else? Like, Player of the Month right here, these are the Player of the Month cards. We had uh, Didi Gregorius in April, Furlander in May, Goldschmidt in June, uh, Carpenter in July, Peralta in August, and then Christian Yelich in September. What's the point of me doing these missions for, let's see, what was Christian Yelich? Uh, a 92 overall right fielder. What's the point in me doing that when I could just do Ken Griffey Jr.'s uh, thing and get a 99 overall immortal? Or uh, who is another outfielder? Babe Ruth right here. What's the point in doing Christian Yelich when I can just get an outfielder who's amazing and better? Like... That's the problem with adding Immortals from day one. If they would have released these cards maybe throughout the year, it probably was a little bit, it would be a little bit better. But the fact is, when you show me on day one who the endgame cards are going to be, regardless if I can unlock them or not, I'm going to know that everything I do is going to become pretty much irrelevant. Everything I do is obsolete because... It doesn't matter. And then so one of the ways you unlock them is you had to complete these career arcs. So let's say you wanted to get um, Cal Ripken Jr., right? Uh, there were two sets of career arcs for other players. So Barry Larkin, you had to complete his career arc. You had to do specific missions with Barry Larkin just to get progress towards Cal Ripken Jr. And then the other shortstop was Hanley Ramirez. You had to do stuff with Hanley Ramirez to get his card. Um in order to get Cal Ripken Jr. And, you know, Hanley, you get an 88 overall diamond once you complete his career arc. And then let's go back to Barry Larkin. What was his? Uh, he had an 89 and a 92. So, like, you get an 88 and a 92 for completing these two career arcs. But then once again, those cards become ir irrelevant once you get Cal Ripken Jr. And you know from day one that there's not going to be anybody better than Cal Ripken Jr. So you're like... Like, I have to do these, but I'm not even going to use what I get out of it. So it basically just becomes a longer grind. And it was just unbelievably annoying. So as you guys can tell, I really was not a huge fan of Immortals. And the Immortals were great. They were really good cards. But the problem is, nothing else really mattered. Like, in MLB The Show 19, you can use cards that aren't Signature Series. Signature Series are not the same thing as Immortals, which I was worried at the beginning of the year that they would be. But they're not. Signature Series are different than Immortals. So, you know, there's, you know, you can use so many, like, Live Series Trout. Very viable in MLB The Show 19. Uh, you can use 92 overall Jose Bautista. Not a Signature. Ichiro, Kenny Lofton, all these guys who aren't a signature, they're extremely good in the game, but they're not signature series. You couldn't use live series in MLB The Show 18. If you weren't using Immortals, you were probably losing. So yeah, that's kind of how I feel about Immortals, as you guys can tell. That was kind of the main issue with MLB The Show 18's content. It just... It wasn't good. It wasn't good when those were in there. So then they had its, or they added some other collections, which were whatever postseason equipment collection. You get a '92 Wade Davis, uh, you get a '95 Reggie Jackson for collecting all the Halloween equipment, and you guys have seen these little souvenirs packs and stuff like that, which I, once again I will definitely talk about. Um, but yeah, I mean, then they had uh, Team Epics, which were just completely awful. Uh, let's take a look at the Chicago Cubs team epic, right? This is one of the ones that uh, was probably the most famous or the most notoriously bad. So you do the team epic, and we went over team epics and MLB The Show 17, and they were actually pretty cool. Epics were nice. They gave you some decent rewards. And then we look at this one, 77 overall Ryan Sandberg, uh, 78 overall, who is this, Ernie Banks, 80 overall Chris Bryan at 50%, and then at 90%, you get an 82 overall Matt Garza. An 82 overall gold. Okay, not the best reward ever. Hopefully the missions are at least weighted to the actual reward that we get. No, they're not. Chicago Cubs pitching? You had to throw 200 innings 
with Chicago Cubs players, win 12 games, strike out 160 batters, and save 15 games. You had to get 500 total play appearances with the Cubs players, 50 RBIs, 50 runs, 20 home runs, like these statistical missions, and it's like, dude, you're giving me an 82 overall gold for doing a long grind. Why in their why would anybody in their right mind do an epic unless they were just absolutely over the moon excited about a specific singular player or they need to get every single flashback because they're a collector in the game. But like I had a lot of cards in this game. I didn't do a single team epic. Team epics were just terrible. They were a huge letdown and they weren't even in the game on day one. They waited like a month to release these. Once again, creative player worked kind of the same. Second base was probably the best you could put creative player at. Um, I did have a good creative player second baseman and this was actually a pretty good or a pretty good thing. They they made creative player a lot more uh, not realistic because it's Diamond Dynasty, but like, you know, they just, they made it more fair. They made it more balanced, which was cool. So creative player was actually one thing they did right. I, I will give them the absolute props on that. They did create a player well. And then over here, they added a bunch of, uh, you know, singular missions. These were like a little bit quicker. Uh, you had to do a couple missions with Ryan Hannigan in order to get his card. And then you would use this card for the, the catcher, uh, career arcs, which was, who was a catcher career arc? Uh, Johnny Bench, you had to complete the catcher ones to do it for Johnny Bench, and then you had to complete Johnny Bench to do it towards uh, Mike Piazza, so on and so forth, right? And all of these are pretty cool. And one thing they added, uh, where is it? Down here, this was a really, really good program they added. So n the Future Stars programs that they added right here were a really, really welcome addition. The cards weren't all that good like they were okay they weren't like you, you couldn't really use them online like that Tyler O'Neill you could use for sure but like all of these cards these programs were qu uh, pretty quick to complete you could do these pretty easily and stuff like that and they added a bunch of them into the game they had like 30 future stars and then you could redeem all of these programs and you can get progress in one of the immortal programs I think it was I think it was this one. Yeah, you can get, uh, once you complete all of those, you get a 99 overall George Brett. So, like, you know, stuff like that was cool. Those, those were nice little additions, and I think they've taken that into 19 pretty well. Then they had, like, timed missions, and then, of course, the postseason program, the finest program, all that stuff. So, the content in 18 just, it, it fell flat because of Immortals. That was really it. Immortals were this game's downfall. They, they really did, in effect, ruin the show 18's content. It just... It did at the end of the day. And I keep telling you guys I'm going to talk about it, so we'll get there right now. Uh, one of the things that you had to do in Immortals was you had to do these exchanges. So let's take a look at Ryan because we were over there. Uh, jersey exchange. Exchange souvenir jerseys from Nolan Ryan's teams. Let's see where we're at. So look, I have all of these jerseys from Nolan Ryan's teams, which remember, these are souvenirs they added into the game that have exchange value and value on the market, but you could not wear them in Diamond Dynasty. This is literally an item in the game that has no in-game value, but has value on the market because you need to exchange them in order to get the immortal. That's a paywall. I don't care however you just you can say, oh, it's easy to get stubs in the game. You could this is the, the definition of a paywall. There's there's no in-game value to get or, or to to or from these jerseys, right? They're, you can't use them. They're literally a barrier for you to get the immortal card. These were a huge cash grab, in my opinion. I didn't like these at all, and I made it very very clear uh, that I did not like them throughout the course of the year. And it wasn't just jerseys. They also had hats. I don't know if I completed Gossage uh, exchanges. Uh, didn't doesn't look like I did. What about Seaver? Looks like I completed Seaver's exchanges. Uh, okay, here you go. Here's one. Um, Bob Gibson played his whole career with the Cardinals. You could only exchange Cardinals gear. You could only exchange Cardinals hats. These and, and look at how much you need. 5,000 for the hats. You get 30 for collecting a bronze hat. Like, you realize that's over 50 hats. It's well over 50 hats. Like, just... Uh. I'm just going to move on. So other than that, over here on the ticket counter, uh, the ticket counter definitely was... Um, Disappointing 
in MLB The Show 18 for sure. So the ticket counter worked really well in MLB The Show 17. It was a way to kind of reward people for adding or for putting a lot of playtime in. You got tickets for playing the game, and then you could use those tickets to buy cards off the ticket counter. And you look here, some of the cards are pretty good. Zach Kozart, decent card. Uh, Player of the Month, Mondesi. Uh, Brooks Robinson, 91 overall. 92, Ron Guidry. 94, Dave Winfield. And then they added an Immortal into the ticket counter. And I remember this came out in October. 99 Yogi Berra was added to the ticket counter in October, and this was the final card they added into the ticket counter. November, December, January, February, all the way into March leading up to MLB The Show 19. That's four and a half months, almost five months of just no content going into the ticket counter. They literally added an Immortal. He was the only card you needed to be a, a diamond level four, and it's like... It was just such a, a missed opportunity, man. It just makes me sad thinking about it because, like, I spend so much time on these games. And it's like, dude, you literally have <laughs> you have an opportunity to give people cool cards just for playing the game and rewarding people just for playing. And it's like, you don't do it. And, like, look in the top corner or the top right of the, the thing, my tickets. I have 32,000 tickets. Yogi costs... 12,000. I could buy two more Yogi Bears right now if I want to, but I have him, so I'm not going to buy another one. I can't quick sell him. It's like, what am I going to use my cards for? Dave Winfield, a, a outfielder that isn't as good as Griffey or Babe Ruth or Immortal Trout or Immortal Ted Williams? Or am I going to get Ron Guidry, who isn't as good as uh, Jake Arietta or Immortal Tom Seaver or Immortal Bob Gibb? Like, it's just, it's the same thing. None of these cards have any value because they're not usable in the game. And one of the things that was really big in MLB The Show 18 is that power was king. If you look at a card and you see their contact is higher than their power, automatically chalk them up. They're not good. They're not going to do anything in online play. Let's take a look at Mondesi. Mondesi. He was kind of balanced. This card was actually pretty good in BR, so that's kind of an outlier. Uh, Zach Kozart, pretty good in BR, whatever, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at some other cards over here on the market. And remember, there were no Immortals on the market. You could not buy Immortals, or at least that's what they said. You couldn't buy Immortals directly with stubs, but you could sure pay a bunch of stubs to get all those souvenir exchanges you need to get done. Let's take a look at, uh, let's see here, um, 99 overall Joe Maurer, right? This was, a, I'm pretty sure, a World Series reward or a Conquest reward or something, and people were really excited about this card when they came out. Look at that. 122-106. Contact didn't matter this year. This game was home run or bust all the way. 83-57 power. Just isn't going to get the job done, especially when you can get Mike Piazza for catcher, and he's going to be so much better. So if we just go ahead and take a look at the market before we go ahead and hop into BR, you can see some of the finest cards. There was a finest Mookie Betts, a finest Edwin Diaz, Jacob deGrom, Christian Yelich, Max Scherzer, Jose Ramirez, had one, Lindor had one, JD, Blake Snell, uh, there was a flashback or a legend, Eric Gagne, Luis Gonzalez, this was also a World Series reward, probably the best World Series reward they released just because the power was really nice, so that was a pretty good one actually, uh, Jason Giambi, nothing against lefties, but you could use him off the bench as a righty because he had high power, um, Alan Trammell, a really good looking card for MLB The Show 19, unusable in MLB The Show 18, straight up. Uh, here's Live Series Mike Trout. Pretty good. You know, not a bad card. You could probably get away with using him a little bit, but just overall, once again, why would you start Trout when you could get Griffey or you could get Babe Ruth or Ted Williams or Immortal Trout just from playing events? And, you know, it just goes back to it. 94 Yogi Berra, absolutely unusable card, and I'm pretty sure this was a flawless BR reward. Yeah, man, it's just, it was a bad, bad go for content in Emily The Show 18, man, and it's sad to look back on, but it's also, it's kind of refreshing. It's kind of nice to know that in MLB The Show 19, they took all of that criticism that we had, um, and it was a lot of criticism, especially from the Sony partners. When we went out there in um, January to talk to them about the game, we made it very clear how everybody felt about content, and they took that to heart, and they actually you know, really handled it, and I think we can all agree that content in 19 is the best it's ever been, but... We had to go through the dark days of MLB The Show 18 in order to get there. So just thank goodness that uh, this game is no longer the active game because I never want to look at this game again, I'll be honest. So here we are on the Battle Royale screen. You may have noticed I changed my clothes. I was actually recording this at a different time. Um, here's Battle Royale. You can see what we've got. Three wins gets you a 75 to 79. Uh, six wins gets you a gold. Nine wins gets you an 85 to an 87 overall diamond. At 12 wins, you get an 88 plus. And then, of course, at flawless, you get 
one of those rewards. One of them is a Future Stars Acuna, 93 Ichiro. But once again, none of those cards were really, <laughs> none of those cards were really worth it, man. It's just Immortals ruined it all. All right, let's jump into it. I know we've talked about that a lot. Let's just go ahead and play some uh, some games right here. So our first round, kind of a trash first round, honestly. We got Edwin Diaz, Chase Utley, and Didi Gregorius. One thing to know about this year is velocity. Really didn't matter. Uh, pitch speeds were extremely slow, as you guys are going to see. So I'm really just going to go for the best power. So I think I'm going to go Didi Gregorius. I think he's going to be my first pick here. Then we've got our starting pitch around. Remember, you get two diamonds, two golds, six silvers, eight commons, and seven bronzes. So hopefully you get to fill out your entire starting rotation with bronzes. All right. So right here, we've got Aaron Judge and Freddie Freeman. This was actually also the first year that attributes went over 100. So I think we're going to go Aaron Judge right here freddie freeman's a nice lefty but once again we are drafting for power just the way the game worked this year power was the key stat you literally never had to look at contact or anything like that it just power was the biggest thing like nothing else mattered it was just the way the gameplay worked and you know it's kind of unfortunate but it's what we had uh, all right so right here i'm gonna check jock peterson with 82 power uh brad miller is actually a pretty good bronze 64 power against righties is not bad but i think i'm gonna go with bruce Suter. try and get a couple uh, guys in there and we got Michael Franco. We got Russell Martin. I think I'm gonna go with Jeremy Jeffress right here decent velo um, Not that velo really matters like I said, uh, so this one we've got uh, it's a gold round with some diamonds in there. There's live series Otani, who was a starting pitcher in this game, because obviously he played two ways last year. He'll probably be a starting pitcher in MLB The Show 20. Uh, Mark Melanson, Jonathan Lucroy, or Howie Kendrick, neither of these hitters are going to be any good. Otani would be nice if I actually land on him, but I don't really feel like I can waste this round. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with Mark Melanson right here. I'll take him. Hopefully he does well for me. Uh, there we go. There's our fourth uh, pitcher round. I think we're going to go with Jed Jerko right here to take the most power that we can. Uh, Javi Guerra, Yomo Sanchez. Yep, we're going to go with Javi Guerra right here. Uh, all right, so I need a couple lefties in the bullpen at some point. Um, I think we'll go ahead and go with Brett Phillips right here. He'll be a bench bat eventually, but we do need some lefties. Oh, Stephen Wright. What's up with me getting knuckleballers in these games? Um... You know, screw. I don't really care about my pitching that much. Let's go with Jordan Hicks and just try to get the best uh, uh, bats that we can. Uh, Ryan Presley, much better than will be the show 19. Michael Franco over at third base. I guess he's probably our option here. This is a pretty trash draft. This draft honestly sucks so far. So go ahead and take some speed right here. 53 speed right there. Uh, then we've got a silver round. AJ Minter, he is a lefty, so there we go. We got our lefty. We got the lefty we were looking for. Sick. Uh, then we've got a bronze round. Christian Bethencourt, Hector Sanchez. None of these cards are going to do anything for me, so we'll take Hector Sanchez. And then we've got one common round, one gold, and one silver, and a couple bronzes after that. So we'll go with Will Middlebrooks. Uh, then we've got a bronze round. Tyler Naquin. Uh, Danny Valencia or Tommy Joseph. We'll go with Tommy Joseph. He can play catcher as well. And then we got our gold round right here. Chris Young or Juan Soto. We got a player of the month, Juan Soto, an 82 overall gold, 93-91 against lefties. Uh, I feel like we should probably go with Juan Soto uh, instead of the Ken Griffey Sr. Just because Juan Soto's got even better numbers against lefties than this Chris Young. Chris Young has better fielding, but fielding didn't matter this year. So we're going to go with Juan Soto. Then we've got a silver round. Uh, kind of sucks. I think we're going to go with Carlos Santana. We can play him at catcher. Uh, then we got a bronze round to finish it off, and it's really not going to be a good one. So we'll take the guy with 88 speed, JB Shuck. All right, let's build the team really quick. All right, so this team is definitely not very good. Jock Peterson, Aaron Judge, DD, Jed Jerko, Santana, Soto, and Franco. And then we've got this random over here at second base. Uh, I don't think I can put anybody else over there. Tommy Joseph doesn't play second. Will Middlebrooks doesn't play second. Um, yeah, I think I'm kind of screwed with Corbin Joseph at second base, but whatever. I actually found a game in like under a minute. That's pretty surprising. I didn't think that would happen. All right, well, see what we got here. The Dallas Crusaders. What's the what's the matchup here? Uh, he's got a silver, and then he's got Jackie Robinson, Greg Garcia, 
It looks like he didn't change his lineup because he's got his Luis Gonzalez batting sixth. Hopefully this guy's not trying to redraft or something. Okay, no, he chose a stadium. He's not trying to redraft, no shot. But once again, you guys are gonna see power was the move in this game. Power really was king. There was no use in choosing anybody that didn't have power. And I'm playing on the zoom camera angle just so you guys can see some of the batting stances and stuff. Oh, please don't quit. Actually, I'm going to switch to strike zone really quickly just so you guys can get a view, the, the closer view to see just how slow pitch speeds were this year compared to other years. Like, just watch how slower or how much slower the ball is. Like, that's a curveball, and, you know, that seems whatever, but if he throws me a fastball, it's going to be very apparent that the pitch speeds are just so much slower. There's a fastball. That was a fastball. That was not fast. That was like a changeup in MLB The Show 19. That was a 96 fastball. No, it wasn't. Oh, Jock Peterson. Is it going to go? Is it going to continue to carry? I don't think so. Another thing, uh, home runs per nine did not have any sort of impact on um, online play in this year's game. MLB The Show 19, home runs per nine does have an impact. So that actually, like makes it kind of harder to hit home runs in 19. Aaron Judge, that's going to be a line drive out right there. And then I think we got Didi coming up. Back-to-back -back Yankees. Oh, I think Didi got all of that one. Low fastball, he turns on it. And there you go, that's a dinger. Jed Jerko, that's a line drive straight over there to third base. So we get a run on, what do you know, a home run. Welcome to MLB 18. Strike three, good start with the common pitcher. We're going to go ahead and head to the bullpen. We're going to bring in this Mark Melanson, see what he's all about. Here we go. Fly ball out to left field, Jackie Robinson down. And this really won't even get exciting until his... Uh, number six batter comes up because that's Luis Gonzalez and you know he didn't set his lineup so obviously uh, you know pitcher's gonna be ninth but you got you know two through or one through eight which is technically two through nine if you go by the positions uh, so Luis Gonzalez will be up six look at the speed out here in center field who is that was Juan Soto my goodness he's slow Juan Soto oh, I just missed that bro just missed it. Juan Soto hits the lefties better than the righties anyway, so it's whatever. Michael Franco, and that is going to be caught. All right, well, there's another. All right, so here is where his good hitters are going to be. Adrian Beltre, I forgot who he has at shortstop, and then his uh, his Luis Gonzalez card. So there's going to be the first out. And one thing, like, I don't know if you guys noticed, when I was going through the draft, there were, you know, in the, the high diamond rounds, you know, you had that Edwin Diaz finest card. You had Didi player of the month. Uh, you had, I forget who my other pick was. It was like, I don't know, somebody not worth it. But, wow, that's a fair ball. He actually got a single. Um, if you look at, like, is he really going to try to go to second? Okay, I thought he was going. But, like, you know if you draft in MLB The Show 19 with the different variety of cards that they have? It's just like, there's so much in there. There's player of the month, there's tops now, there's signature series, there's live series, there's regular legends and flashbacks. Like, dude, the diversity of the cards in MLB 19, especially for BR, is just so much better. And it just adds to the point that this game was just so bland when it came to content. There was nothing all that special about this game's content, at least nothing special that we wanted to see. You could classify Immortals as something special because it was something we hadn't seen before and it was a new edition, but nobody wanted that. Or at least nobody wanted that with the way it was executed when the content actually came out, so. Yeah, that's BR for you. Oh yeah, that's another thing. You literally could not strike people out in this game. It didn't matter if you were playing the worst person in the world. For the most part, you can't strike out anybody in this game. Everything gets fouled off. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, what do you know? Another foul. Remember how I said foul balls are a problem? This is the 10th pitch of the at-bat with the super low common rated card. It's like a 60 overall second baseman. Dude's got no vision. He has no business making an at-bat go that long by fouling off pitches. Ah, Tommy Joseph, I expected better from you. All right, who was my leadoff guy? I don't even know, but he just missed the ball out there in the outfield. I'm going to try to go to third base. 
and I'm 100% gonna make it. That's a triple with Tommy Joseph. See, errors still happen in this game. Chuck Peterson, wow, it's actually a single. Okay, it wasn't a home run. And the reason you didn't see a lot of singles and just other types of hits in this game is because there just weren't that many like hit types in this game. Oh wow, you didn't need to die for that, buddy. Um, and they even said that on stream, like straight up contact hitters in this game. They SDS said that uh, said it themselves. Contact hitters just straight up weren't getting enough like power on their swings. And that's not saying, oh wow, that's a three run bomb. That's not saying that. Um, contact hitters should be hitting home runs all the time or something like that they're just meaning that they straight up just don't get enough like force or power or exit velocity on their swings to begin with so they had to go into the back end and fix that and that's why guys like Kenny Lofton and Tony Gwynn all those guys were very usable in MLB The Show 19 but not in MLB The Show 18 so that's one thing to remember just like one more thing I want to show you before we get out of here over here if you go to these timed missions all-star summer there was a whole program for the all-star stuff look at this Tony Gwynn card this Tony Gwynn card's fantastic Amazing contact, 117 vision, the the great fielding, great speed. This guy would be great in MLB The Show 19. Nobody used him in MLB The Show 18. I wonder how many people actually even got him. Nobody used this card. He wasn't good. Even with the contact being at that high level, he just wasn't getting enough power on his swings to actually get anything to bloop over the second baseman's head or bloop over the shortstop, whatever it is. And it's just another reason why power hitters were just so much better. Oh man, so that's MLB The Show 18. I look forward to not getting back on this game um, at any point in the near future. Yeah, this game just was an extreme letdown. Um, and once again, there were still like decent parts of it. Like uh, events, I think, were pretty good. Although there was the relief pitcher, Phil Necro, that was definitely not fun to play against. I thought this postseason program was really good. They gave you a lot of diamonds in here. And the Steve Pierce was actually pretty good. But once again, because of his power, um, there was also, I think, this Bregman. He was decent. He wasn't amazing. But, like, he could get the job done. And same with Aaron Judge. So, you know, it's just like there were certain things that were good and certain and a lot of things that were bad. Creative player was also good. Um, I think uh, the future stars that they added were a, a pretty good addition right there. Yeah, man, I don't know. There's just there, there were some things they had and just some things that they didn't. And uh, just I think a lot of people are way more happy with MLB The Show 19's product. I know I am. So anyway, guys, down in the comments, let me know. What did you think of MLB The Show 18? Did you have fun playing this game? Did you hate it? Did you love it? Let me know your thoughts down there. If you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.